I hate to say this, but I'm going to tell you the honest truth. People are counting on you to be stupid. People are counting on you to not care. People are counting on you to not ask questions. Well, my generation has been part of creating the monster. Um, we see the ill effects of that now, and we don't know how to tame it. We collectively together, the legislators, the, the consumers, the healthcare consumers, have all worked in creating some of the problems that we're seeing now, and it's going to take all of us working together. There are people who are in the position of responsibility making decisions about monies, and sometimes the desire to line our pockets outweighs the desire to provide quality care. Foster says the call for health care reform dates all the way back to 1912. We all say we want to reform, but we don't know how to do it. But your generation can say, look, it didn't work, and you keep doing the same thing, and that's a definition of insanity. You keep doing the same thing over and over again, and you're surprised at the results. You keep getting the same result. I'm really hoping that you can hear our shouts and our screams and hear them listen with uh, with all aspects of, of your mind and your intelligence and your creativity and help us to resolve this before you need it. Next up is Christopher Parks, the CEO of an organization called Change Healthcare. Change Healthcare is an online tool to help people understand who they owe, what they owe, and ways to save money. But more importantly, it's a way for people to compare and share and better manage their healthcare expenses. I've been in healthcare all of my career and I thought that I knew and understood the healthcare system and once I was on the other side of the coin after both of my parents passed away I suddenly realized that I actually had helped create a significant mess. And it was that experience that prompted Parks to write his book entitled My Healthcare is Killing Me. For anyone that's enjoying making money off the current healthcare system for them the status quo is a marvelous idea and that's what a lot of employers, that's what a lot of the insurance companies, that's what a lot of those people that are parasites to the system are hoping and expecting is that people will just ignorantly, passively not do anything. There's no one place to point your finger at. There is no one solution. But I think one good starting point is you can't fix something unless you understand it. And you can't understand it unless you learn about it and you share and you visit and you discuss and you have dialogue. I really do believe that the only way we're going to make a significant difference is to bring in a generation that isn't stuck in the old paradigm, the old ways of thinking. Like Shout America says, look, unless you say something or do something, nothing's going to change. Go to changehealthcare.com to download a free copy of Parks' book. The students also had a chance to hear from U.S. Senator Bob Corker from Tennessee for some political perspective on the issue. There are two issues in healthcare that have to be dealt with. One of, one of them is the out of control costs, okay, the delivery system itself continues to increase in cost. The other component is financing. Okay, how do you finance a health care system so that everybody has access to whatever health care delivery system we have today? Let me tell you that the, the key word for Republicans in Washington, the key word is choice. That some government bureaucrat, if you will, is not telling you what plan that you're going to be part of, okay? and where you're going to go for care and sort of lock you into something that you have no choice on. Democrats, on the other word, the key word for Democrats is universal care. They want everybody in our country to have health care, okay? Now, I believe in both, okay? And so what I've done is actually joined up with people on both sides of the aisle to figure out a way that we preserve choice, but we do so in such a manner that everybody has the opportunity for health care. Okay? To me, that would be the best of both worlds. Now, there are some people that I respect greatly um, that would like to see Medicare just be the system for everybody. If you look at cost increases right now in Medicare, they've been incredible. And that's one of the places, candidly, because, because of the way we do Medicare, there's a lot of volume done in Medicare that candidly has nothing to do with keeping people healthy because as people's reimbursements go down, they start performing more and more care. They do that to make a living, so 30% uh, of the health care that's delivered today does nothing whatsoever to help people get well. All right. 
Now, if you do the math and you understand what a big part health care is of our GDP, okay, the gross domestic product of our country, that means that 5%, that's a big number, of our gross domestic product is wasted, okay, totally wasted, okay. What I've done, I've actually crafted a bill uh, that focuses on, on tax credits, okay. Uh, right now we've got about uh, uh, 47 or 8 million people in our country that don't have health care. Uh, this tax credit proposal that I have crafted, okay, would allow 27 million more people immediately to have health care in our country, according to CBO. That's still not 47 or 48. And it would do so in a budget neutral way, okay. I've also teamed up, though, with a guy named Ron White. I'm what's called an original co-sponsor of that bill. We've got about seven Republicans and seven Democrats. And it also focuses on choice, okay? But it has a few more bells and whistles in it. And as a matter of fact, uh, candidly, there'll be many what I would call really, really conservative people, okay, that will not like the Wyden bill because there's a little bit more government involvement in it. Uh, but at the same time, you still have choice. But the goal of any health care pr pr proposal right now is to make sure that they're budget neutral. There, there's no deficit that's created. Both of these bills do that. I caught up with Senator Corker after his talk to hear his opinions on health care reform. Health care has dropped off the radar screen because of the economic issues and, and the energy issues that our country has been dealing with. But it is still, in my opinion, one of the biggest issues our country has to deal with. Part of what our strategy was in beginning to talk health care and to actually have a bill in place six months ago was to influence the, the presidential discussion. Because, you know, in spite of this, uh, uh, some of the feelings that the public has about what candidates say to them, what I've found is that when candidates get on the campaign trail, and they say what they're going to do, they generally try to do that. And so what we did in, in getting the debate going early uh, was to get them to focus on some core principles. And McCain has actually taken up the, the tax credit uh, proposal. I'm not as familiar uh, with Obama's, but my guess is uh, uh, he probably has picked up some of the widened principles. So, uh, you know, but I know that both bills are influencing uh, uh, the debate in health care. We talk about the fact that there are 47 or 8 million Americans that do not have health insurance, okay? I think the moral, it's a moral responsibility for all of you who care about this issue and all of us who today have the tremendous privilege to, to, to be involved in it to figure out a way to work out uh, these types of dilemmas so that people here in our country have access to affordable, private, quality health care. Thank you all very much. Visit the education section of Shout America's website for more resources to educate yourself. And don't forget to tune in for the afternoon session.